Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is, of course, Michael Clareda of Michael Clareda Arts. Today, I've got a great treat for you guys. I'm super excited to show you what I've been working on. And um, I had a, a, a company, XB Pen, actually, reached out to me and they reached out and said, hey, you wanna review one of our uh, latest and greatest tablets? And I said, absolutely. And um, that's what I did. I reviewed their 10 inch artist series tablet second generation and that video is on the channel the link is in the description and in addition to that they said hey by the way um you know after you make the video if you wouldn't mind could you please be a judge in our 17th year anniversary contest where we're going to be giving away products celebrating the fact that we've been in business for 17 years and and, uh, you know, we'd love to have you on board as a judge. And I said, absolutely, fine. You know, that sounds fantastic. And in addition to that, they also asked me to create an image that um, that uh, is part of the contest. So the subject uh, tagline is Phoenix and the Anywhere Door. That Phoenix, of course, being their logo icon, character icon that represents their branding and you know across the line and um that particular character uh i believe is a fox and you know you can look on their website and see him in numerous locations here he is in the resin iteration use him whenever i do phoenix illustrations i've done holiday phoenix illustrations i've done christmas i've done halloween i've done valentine's day and the illustration with the innerware door i wanted to do something a little bit different you guys know that I'm a fan of classic cinema, and in particular, one of my favorite movies being Indiana Jones. That is based on some of the old classic serials, the weekly serials they came out with, you know, uh, Buck Rogers and uh, some of the Western-inspired, uh, you know, The Phantom, that's a uh, sort of uh, serial. So I love uh, period-looking illustrations. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do today. I've already sketched out Phoenix in his environment, and I wanted Phoenix to be in the jungle uh, discovering the Anywhere Door, and that's something that uh, really just kind of popped in my head. You know, initially I was like, Spaceman, maybe he's on a different planet uh, going through my brain, and I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to do something fun. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I will be uh, doing mostly time lapse because this illustration took a little bit longer, and I don't want this video to be an hour long. So I'm going to be doing some narration, some time lapse, some stopping, um, just to kind of show you process. Um, and uh, let's get started. So I wanted to do a preface. I will be working on the XP Pen 24 inch Pro 2K model. You can see it in all of its wondrous glory. I have it mounted um, with a um, with one of those uh, Ergotron bars, Ergotron arms onto my desk, and it's hooked up to my Mac Mini. And it's been absolutely spectacular. You can see the angle um, of the machine. I'm sitting comfortably, ready to sit down and, and do hours of illustration work. And now we transition into where I created the initial sketch. I wanted to give a little bit of preface, a little bit of context for the illustration and how illustrations like this are created. Um, this is Sketchbook Pro. And, uh, you know, I typically will start out in Sketchbook Pro because it is a very baseline rudimentary uh, program. You can use pretty much whatever you want, Photoshop, Krita, um, you know, whatever. But you see that it's, you know, I can go in and utilize uh, different textures and, and different brushes, um, you know, overall. You can see that I did numerous illustrations. Uh, here it is uh, before I decided to kind of tilt things to the left for more drama. I wanted drama in my illustration. And I typically will use uh, one of the brushes on the left hand side, the little sketch drawing brush, and I'll put in some value, maybe have a little value study uh, going on. And I keep it in layers because eventually I translate it over to either Clip Studio, Paint, uh, Manga Studio, or Photoshop and saving it as a PSD file really is uh, a good thing <laughs> um, overall. So 
what am I doing right now? So I keep going back because I think in my brain, I'm like, you know, I remember this illustration having more layers, but then I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I think I've tried to do it like five times. I'm like, okay, this is it. This is the one we're doing. And yeah, so <laughs> you can see sometimes the frustration that happens uh, on my end. But either way, I'm like, yeah, okay, we can work with this. So right now I'm saying, okay, at 300 dpi, we're looking at about 12 and a half by nine. I wanted it, you know, in a letterbox cinema look, uh, looking panel because I wanted it to have, again, I'm referencing those old serial movies that had wide angles, you know, the cinemascope uh, cameras. And I, you know, I wanted it to have a, a look and a feel to it. So if you look at the illustration, you can see that it does have a dramatic feel to it, but uh, it also, you know, it also has direction and movement. You can see that I'm, I'm going in and kind of annotating. Um, at the time, my microphone didn't work, so my apologies for that. So I'm kind of narrating over it. So movement. So I typically break things out um, into the rule of thirds. So I'll break my composition, and you see this, into that grid pattern. And when those, where those lines intersect are most typical um, places of interest. So I've placed his head uh, just below, um, you know, just below that upper right-hand quadrant intersection. And I don't put things in the very center. Now, this could change throughout the duration of the illustration. Um, but if you look, you know, I said basically in that little comment... I want it to be there to the right hand side and then you're going to see a lot of things happening here. So the focal point being in the center, you know, a lot of times you'll see illustrators put things there whenever they want symmetry or whenever they want that to be the exclusive subject. You know, I want your eye to move around this illustration. And I use devices within the illustration. I'm showing you right now the movement of the different angles and opposing angles to help you move through the illustration. A lot of times we don't understand why we move through but it is mostly designed that way. Like the plants will point toward the head, the plants on the left will point toward the head, and you know the sword points up. That sword is a directional, um, a directional element to help point you towards the anywhere door. So he's overlapping that anywhere door, and you can see, well, that's basically that's where he's going. And you know, as I progressed through you know, determining what made sense in the context. I changed a few things, but overall, in the end, you know, the illustration uh, turned out being pretty much what you see. And now I'm showing the framing elements. Framing elements, again, framing that central subject, that central uh, ideal to really direct your eye. All these elements, you know, he's pointed down, he's pointed you towards Phoenix, and then you have these uh, trees that are pointing you towards the door and framing you in to keep your eye exactly where I want you to look. You can look in other places, but whenever you first glance at it, it's an easy read, and that's really what's important. And here I am again in Sketchbook Pro explaining this is the last free version, 8.7.1, of Sketchbook Pro. After that, you have to pay for it if you want it updated. I've kept this on my computer for quite a while because it's so useful. And you can see I've got a myriad of brushes there on the left-hand side. So I've sped this up, and this is pretty much the way the video is going to uh, resume for the entirety uh, of the video. Uh, hopefully, um, it won't be too long. But, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm showing you the directional uh, items and how they play out in the context of the illustration. And originally, I was going to do everything in Sketchbook Pro. And then if you look, I'm like, oh, yeah, Sketchbook doesn't have... The ability to angle, <laughs> I can't angle my um, my symmetry, you know, one of the only programs that you can do that in is going to be Clip Studio. So I'm going to transfer over to Clip Studio. And I'm, of course, one of those artists that isn't, you know, really tied to a specific program. I really branch out as much as I can on a myriad of different devices using different programs and of course being uh, an illustrator um, as well as a 3D sculptor and artist and graphic artist. You know, I have the ability to switch between your Photoshop, your Illustrator, your Clip Studio Paint, ZBrush, whatever the uh, job really needs at that moment. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm using the symmetry tool to tie in the background and show that anywhere door and design it uh, 
you know, to be attractive and cool. I didn't really have, you know, quote unquote, I didn't go looking at different Mayan um, cultures, but I have an idea, you know, just because, you know, I'm a, I'm a history geek <laughs> and I love uh, history and I love Aztec and Mayan culture. And I wanted to pull from some of those things that I've seen in the past and mix them a little bit with um, maybe some fictional uh, cultures. And that's what I'm doing, that third eye there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm basically going to put you guys on time lapse if I see something that I need to jump in on. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, eventually you'll see me switch over to Photoshop because I started needing to select things and whatnot and I just, you know, I think I blocked in the color using Clip Studio and then once I blocked in all my color, uh, my local color, I translated over to Photoshop because I love, I have a ton of brushes in Photoshop and even though you can see I've got a ton of brushes here, I just felt like Photoshop was a better fit in this moment again. In that second, you know, you switch gears and, and you know, you make what, what makes the most sense. And, you know, working on these digital tablets, uh, you know, your XB Pen and, and some of the other companies, it's, it's just a seamless transition uh, overall, um, you know, from traditional, which is what I'm really trained in, uh, to digital. And, you know, these tools, these digital tools allow me to really just stretch my legs and and to have a lot of fun overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on time lapse. There's, I don't know how many hours I spent on this, probably maybe about six, maybe five and a half, six hours. So hopefully you guys will enjoy and we'll do a quick wrap up um, uh, in the end, okay? Enjoy.
this is where I land. I'm not really going to dive too much deeper into it. So typically in this situation, what I'll do is I'll start noodling. <laughs> and noodling, if you guys know um, what noodling is, I'm sure a lot of you do, uh, you know, I'll go in and I'll just start playing around with the different elements in the context of the illustration. So right now, I've got him on his own layer, Phoenix on his own layer. So what I'll probably end up doing as I look at him, so just making sure, because I want to blur some of those little elements here and there. Um, so there he is. So I can move him around. I have him selected. So I'm going to go ahead and group him, and I can copy him, and I can flatten him. So now he's flat. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can just start messing around with the, uh, you know, the blurring. And I like blurring things because, again, it, it, I can go in and, and really push and pull that focal point. Um, and focal point being the distance of an object. Like if you were to take a picture of a camera, right? You see the objects that are in focus and the objects in the background are, are out of focus and the objects in the foreground are in focus. So to give things a little bit more drama, I want to position uh, Phoenix uh, in an environment that has a three-dimensionality. So I'll go in, I'll blur that ear, you know, that hand is a little bit further away, you know, and just start some of those rough edges that are, you know, a little bit out and it shows a little bit of motion, gives him a little bit of movement overall. And then I might go in, yeah, again, to push and pull that focal point back and forward, you know, the corner there is a little bit out of focus. So as you go in, you can really see, like, which little item is going to be crisp and which is going to be pushed back. You know, it's like you're taking a picture with a camera. You know, you as the illustrator, you as the artist, have the ability to, you know, especially in a digital environment, right? If I was doing this traditionally, it'd be a little bit different. You know, if I mess things up, all I have to do is I go back because I have him on an entire layer. <laughs> and it really, it helps me, you know, experiment. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now is I'm experimenting, you know, like the fire right here. I can kind of blur that out quite a little bit and you know his eyeball and you know that one on the far side so and I'm going to come back with my dodge and burn dodge and burn being of course a burn <clears throat> a photography um, terminology and tool so uh, burn is to expose it to more light dodge is to shield the uh, photographic paper from light so um, you know, burn, you're going to make it darker. Dodge, you're going to bring, uh, you're going to make it lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and make this. I'm going to do midtones. You see, again, it's going to bring that down. And again, it, everything that I do is really to focal you right to him. Yeah, that's going to be darker because all this is in shadow. It gets pushed. Because the brighter this is, the darker this is. Right, that might even be in silhouette just a little bit. Tip that's going to be partially in silhouette. So, like I said, I could noodle with this for hours, but I think overall it turned out exactly uh, where I wanted it to. So, big shout out to XB Pen. Man, they've been such a great supporter of my channel, such a great supporter of me. And, you know, I've already done the uh, congratulatory 17 years. Gosh. You know, a company's been around that long. They got to be doing something, right? You know? Um, and they're continually pushing that envelope to make better products, to do better things, to show that they are a force to be reckoned with. You know, I was a, um, a big fan of some of their competitors, and I still, you know, I still look at different, who doesn't, different technologies coming out. And I really love the fact that a lot of the companies nowadays are, are, you know, competing for your dollars and your value. Um, but XP Pen is definitely one to consider, um, you know, and, and big shout out to them uh, for providing that 10-inch 
uh, tablet for me to um, for me to test. And of course, this tablet that I'm working on here, you know, being uh, as big as it is, it really gives me the opportunity to really you know use my arms and 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 stroke and stuff like that. And I really enjoy utilizing it. Um, but again, you know, just remember, this is something that I tell everybody that that uses these digital tablets. You know, there's no there's there's no tablet that's going to teach you how to draw. There's no tablet that's going to put in the hours for you. There's no tablet that's going to do the research and uh, really uh, do the artwork for you. So it's up to you to really invest in yourself um, and the tools you know that are going to get you to where you need to go. Um, and definitely XB Pen uh, has those tools uh, to do that. So. Thank you again for watching, and uh, please like and subscribe if you like what you see, and we'll see you next time, okay? Yeah, I could definitely work on this for hours upon hours upon hours, you know, pushing that light source a little bit further here, a little bit further here. Yeah. And then for some reason, I'm going to go behind, and I want to use this color right here right there i don't want to do something like like right there yeah <laughs> it pushes a silhouette you see that it pushes silhouette so far it's like you're you're using that 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 light right there yeah go ahead and push that down just a little bit all right you guys we'll see you next time bye